Welcome back to PGHN Design Channel. Today we are going to look into this snack ring and how we design the pattern to flow to the body. Are you ready? Let's get started. We are going to starting with the helix command and let's set it up the center for zero. And depends on how wide you want it to have on this ring. And I will choose the turn, change it to two. Diameter for 16. And holding your shift at the front view, so we'll get a curve like this, okay? And then that will be the main body part. The second part I'm going to do the head, but in order to head to flow really nicely, I'm going to kind of pull in a tag somewhere around here. This will be the tip of the head. And then we're gonna turn on this and we might need to delete point over there. Okay, so let's do a test. We are going to blend from this end to that end. And then if that turn is like kind of too big, you might want to do adjustment and something like that. Notice that it is snapping into the place that you may not like it. That's fine. Don't worry about it. We'll change that later. And the same thing we're going to do is put another tag. So let's draw a straight line roughly about right here. And we might need to delete a few uh, point at the end. And we again want to use the blend tool. Let's go ahead to blend from here to here. And we might need to make it smoother or something like this. Let's click OK to now we can delete those two tab there. All right. So you can um, do one thing first because it's snapping into the place that we don't want. On the top view, we want to use project to C plane and we want to delete the input. Now we can moving the point is completely flat. Now we can move the point from the end point right there to here. The same thing from the end point right there to there. So that now they will be in the right place. We want to join everybody. We also want to rebuild it. So there won't be any kinkles or anything. So 24 looks nice to, nice to me. So I'm going to click OK. So that will be our new curve. If this curve isn't go into the place that you like it, at this point, you can kind of still editing until you get something you really like. All right. And notice that at the front view, the curve is no longer follow the circle completely. So we need to change that before we do any surface. Let's go ahead to draw a cylinder. At the front view, we want to set it up the radius for 8 or diameter for 16. And we want to make sure both are equal yes. And that's covered the whole things. So now we have this curve over here. We want to pull that curve to the surface over there. So now the curve is on the surface. We can delete that and this will be the right curve for us to work on it. First of all, let's go ahead to set the profile. I'm going to draw a circle roughly right there and that will be the thickness of your ring. And then I want to draw a straight line kind of a cutting, create some sort of a profile for the snake body. So that's trimming over here and over here. And let's go ahead to join everybody. Once we join, we want to move th from the midpoint to the quadrant here. Then we kind of want to copy this to most of the important spot, which will be right here. And we also want to copy to the other side, but you will need to rotate it and move it to the quadrant there. Now when we sweep this one back to the top, this one will need a copy from that to this point as well. But I would like to make this one slightly wider. I would like to keep the same thickness but slightly wider. And we want to copy this one from this point to any of the point to like a neck area. I want to make it a little bit thinner. At the same time, we need to flip this one to be something like that and also make it into the right position. So let's move from the midpoint to the near point over there. 
All right. So for the head, we need the head to getting bigger. So let's copy another one from this point roughly to here. And the end, we have another one. All we need to do is turn this around and make it slightly bigger. Make sure you don't want it to stay inside of a ring shank. So let's move it up a little bit to the near point. Same thing gonna happen on this guy. This guy actually need to be smaller. We want to rotate it into the right angle and then we want to move it from here to here. Make sure everything look nice. If not, just adjust it. We can also turn on the um, record history and move it later if that were better for you. But I always like to make sure the sweep work well at the first. Oh, at the end, close to the tail, we need another one. So let's make a copy from here to here as well. That one to be stand up like this. And we want to move it that one approximately right there, smaller and tilt it something like this. Let's give it a try to do the sweep one rail. This is the rail and we're going to select all the cross section at the same time. You might want to spend a little bit of time to make sure that everything is aligned. This one need to flip, this one need to flip. All right. And we also want to record a history in case we want to change anything. So let's click OK right here. And it looks all right to me, but if you um, feel like the head needs to be bigger or smaller, all you need to do it's to scale this guy and everything will follow. Okay. So now we wanted to work on the body part. We'll close this part later on. We're going to create UV curve with only the top portion. And then we will get this area right here. This is entirely from the head to the tail, right? So we're going to create a pattern, but we don't want a pattern going starting from the head. We want the head to be high polished or later on setting the stone. We do want a pattern to go where somewhere the neck area over there. Okay. So that's uh, starting the pattern. When we look in the pattern, so when I'm looking at the pattern, I'm looking at the few structure over here. Like this is more like a fish scale structure, but I guess this is on the belly. If I'm, I'm wrong, I, I'm not an expert on the snake, but uh, we kind of like the pattern over here that is, has some similarity uh, for all three pictures. So we're going to use this picture to discuss a little bit. In this picture, each of them look like some sort of a square but around the corner, but puffy at the same time. So this is what we are looking for. So I'm going to starting with the corny corner and we want to, I'm going to do anywhere, but I want it to, uh, to be square. So I'm holding the shift and have this coming back something like this, just a little bit rounded to make it puffy. There are multiple ways to do it that the fast way I will do is creating the surface first. Let's go to the surface extruded this curve straight and you want to go down. For how long, it doesn't matter because we're going to delete that surface later. It's just for the reference. Then we are going to use the patch tool. Make sure that you're not select the curve. You want to select the extrusion age. Then you click enter. Then we come up this window. We can preview it. And then that will give us some sort of like puffy um, surface over there. Okay. Now we don't need this one. And the one that we need is only this surface. Now, first, first things that I wanted to do is rotate it for 45 degrees. So that's using the gumball type it 45 over here. And this is what the first pattern that we have. I'm going to using the linear array tool and I want to array roughly about file them and we can change it later. Um, I just need them to be overlapping a little bit like this. Okay. So this is going to be a group. I'm going to align with my rectangle over there. So let's use a line tool, horizontal center. That's where we want to align. And that will be the first one. The second one, basically it's going to coming out like this, we're going to make a copy and I'm going to have them move it back something 
like this. Again, we want an overlapping, and that will be the pattern that we have on the perspective. Let's take a look on the perspective, and let's look at the render view and see if this is the pattern that you like or you need to get them a little bit closer or something like that so you don't have the gap in between. If you like this pattern and it works nice to you, we're turning back to the ghost view and we want to ungroup those and take out the very last one. So that will be the set for us to start with. Let's go ahead to group this one one more time. So now we have this one and it looked nice to me. Let's go ahead to bowling. So once we bowling union, we got this surface over there. We want this surface go all the way to the end. So again, we are going to use a linear array. And how many do we need it? I'm not so sure, but I'm just going to guess maybe 40 of them. And we are going to go from here, 40, and just kind of a make sure it is overlapping like the first set that we have there. Apparently it's not enough, so we might need to go double the amount. So let's go ahead to do 80 of them. We'll rather to have enough than not enough um, because we can always delete them. All right, so I'm going to stop it right here and take a look. So this is our curve and I prob probably don't need anything right there. Want to leave the back a little bit open over there. Okay, so this is what we have and take a look on it and see if you like it. If you do like it, then you can go ahead the two bowling them one more time. Let's go ahead and check on the bottom. We want to use the commands cap to close it on the bottom. And if you have something like that, I tell you it cannot close, probably because all this point is coming with the same height. So we need to make the border a little bit thicker. So let's go ahead to use the command duplicate boulder. And we want a duplicate border of this one. Okay, so once we have that, we want to go ahead to extrude straight. We don't need it to be super thick. Let's just go ahead to use 0.2 millimeter. So now we join it, we should able to cap it if it is flat. And it tells us that it cannot cap it, but because I guess the, um, the surface wasn't completely, the border wasn't completely flat. So we will need to do one more thing. So we are going to create a curve roughly from here to here and we want to move this curve up a little bit somewhere to cover entire bottom and we're going to use that curve to trim this surface over here. Once it is trimmed, we can go ahead to use the cap command and we want to cap this guy. So now after we cap it, everything will be solid and then we can work on this. Uh, one thing that I wanted to say because you don't want it to age to be like really stick it out once it is close to the edge over there. So we do want to make them a little bit thinner. So the way that I'm going to do is first of all, I need to define it where the area is going to be. So we are going to making a solid with the extrusion. And make sure that we want it to be both sides, so cover the whole things. And we want to use the bowling uh, intersect. And this is the object that we want to intersect with this box there. So now everything is fitting in this area. What I like to do is to make sure all the edges is kind of lower than the middle part. So we are going to do the cage edit. I'm gonna select this object and we will do the bounding box and let's go ahead to keep the X for eight of them. Y and Z we can keep the same for four. Basically we just will need to change the high. So that's coming over here, select all the one on the top, holding the shift, select everybody on the bottom. So what we wanted to do is using the 1D scale. Let's go ahead to use the 1D scale and we want to scale something like this, snapping into the endpoint. Move it down to as close as possible to the bottom. 
All right, so you get this kind of a curve there. If you feel like you still have some room, let's go ahead to move it one more time. Also at the end right there, we want coming into the front view and we want to blend it to the surface possible as well. So let's go ahead to use a 1D scale. I'm going to do on the side, maybe easier for you to see. So I'm going to hold the shift and have it going down like this. It's going to take some time to work on it as we have a lot of uh, surface over there. Okay, so let's go ahead to flow this to the snake and see how it goes. It will take some memory because we have a lot of the surface. So if your computer is slow, you might want to save it right now just in case, in case it crash. So let's go ahead to creating the surface and we are going to flow this pattern using the command flow along surface and the base surface will be on this corner and the target surface will be on this corner. It may take a while but once you flow on it, it will turn into the wireframe. That's okay. We just need to bring back to the ghost and then you will see something like that. If that is what you want, double check. Let's go ahead to check in with the render view and see if this is the pattern that you want. Okay, so now we are going to finish the rest, close the mouse at the end and also do the eye. To close the both end, we are going to use the patch command. We're going to select this curve and that curve and we can preview it. And if it is not puffy enough, you can use a sweep to uh, to make the one really puffy. Um, for this demonstration, I'm going to stay here. So we are going to patch one more time, clicking here and here. And if you like that, you can you can just join them. Next step, let's do the eye. So if you look at the eye, it looks like it, the surface coming out a little bit and this is some sort of a bowl and it might have this shape over there. It is a good place that you can set the stone or you can cut out this marquee and then um, doing the enamel or whatever you wanted to do. But we wanted this puffy things coming out from the skin. So one thing that I would like to do is to draw the eye on the side. First, let's go ahead to bring in the sphere and we're going to have the sphere something like this and make it shadow a little bit. The second thing I wanted to do is draw that puffiness on the side and it's going to come in to be flat something like this. Okay. And then so we are going to use this one in our uh, sphere. Let's go ahead to horizontal align to the zero point and we're going to create in the surface using the revolve and that will revolve <coughs> with the same center as our sphere and we want to 360 degrees so we'll get something like this. I also want to have that marquee looking things um, so I'm going to use the arc tool and to create something like this and having that to mirror to the other side. So now I have that one, I'm going to join them and um, having the sphere to be split with this marquee over there. So now we got this surface is split from there. We're just going to move it down. And to close the shape, we're going to use the command for loft. We're going to loft from here to here. And again, from here to here. One more time from here to here. And the reason we need to do it twice is because there's a seam over there. So let's go ahead to join them. All right, so now we have this. We want to make sure that we cap the one on the bottom so it's solid. And then I'm going to bowling union. So now that I become one piece, I want to kind of look at my model. Maybe you want to scale it down a little bit to work with. Another thing is before we flow it back to the surface, we want to drop a point there and make sure this point is aligned with this line over here. 
Okay, so that will be our reference point. Okay, so we're gonna use the command is under the transform. You have orient on the surface. So this is the object. We wanna select the point and make sure that you wanna click it outside of the shape. And let's come over here and click on the surface we want this one to go. Um, so we click on this surface, make sure the ridges is unchecked. You click OK and make sure copy equal yes. And I kind of roughly want this one to be here. And then let's take a look. I mean, it's its eye is like kind of overwhelming big. So we might need to scale this down a little bit. It's kind of a too big there. So let's go ahead 3D scale to make it smaller. That may fit better. So let's do it again with the uh, orient on the surface. So we want to pick up this one, snapping into the point. Make sure you come into the side and then select the surface. So let's go ahead to select this surface right there. And then let's move the eye to here. So now it's hopping much better. I'm gonna coming over to the other side and pick where approximately they will be. So now I have the eye for it as well. I hope you enjoy the video. If you are a beginner for the Rhino, you probably wanna check out the Rhino for Beginner playlist. It has uh, some basic uh, information over there. There are more classes that I offer online. If you're interested, please check out my website. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoy. See you next.